Imagine your next door neighbor decided to get a pet lion to keep in her backyard. You tell her you are concerned for the safety of neighborhood children and you really don't want her to get a lion, but she insists it's okay because she has a fenced in backyard. The next day, the lion escapes and enjoys a buffet at the local playground. When the police confront your neighbor, she says, Don't blame me. I put up a fence. It's not my fault the lion got loose. Do you think the community would accept the excuse that accidents happen? Or would they demand someone be held accountable for creating a situation where a lion could get loose in a residential neighborhood? I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and a former Indiana state representative. And this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. If a person or company creates a potential for harm, they have both a moral and legal obligation to take adequate steps to ensure no one is harmed by what they are doing. This concept is often referred to as due diligence, the care a reasonable person exercises to avoid harm to other persons or their property. While it is true the neighbor didn't intentionally let the lion loose, it was their decision to bring a lion into a residential neighborhood that created the potential for harm in the first place. Now let's talk about data breaches. Regular viewers of this channel know my disdain for surveillance capitalism in general and for data brokers, also known as data aggregators in particular. National public data is just one of hundreds of such data brokers that I consider a parasite on modern society. I do not like the business model of companies who collect and aggregate the personal data of millions of people, including their name, address, phone number, email, social security number, location history, credit card purchase history, etc. I believe there should be a federally enforced opt-out list similar to the National Do Not Call list, only with more enforcement mechanisms, that would allow people to stay out of these databases. But at a bare minimum, if a company is going to collect data on people, they should have to adequately protect it from hackers. And if they can't protect it from hackers, they shouldn't be collecting it in the first place. Want to see a recent example of what I personally consider criminal negligence? How about the story that broke on August 15, 2024, regarding national public data allowing hackers to steal 2.9 billion records, including people's social security numbers? According to a federal class action suit filed in the U.S. District Court, Southern District of Florida, the hacking group USDOD claimed it had stolen personal records of 2.9 billion people from national public data around April of this year. The lawsuit further claims the plaintiff and class members of the lawsuit are not current and former customers of national public data, but are individuals who had the misfortune of having their personally identifiable information targeted, mined, and scraped by national public data from non-public sources without their consent and national public data didn't even bother to encrypt all that sensitive data they were storing. Was that a lion roaring? The USA Today story from August 15th cited a source which claimed the hackers were selling the 2.9 billion records on the dark web for $3.5 million. National Public Data has posted a notice on their website explaining what happened. Quote, There appears to have been a data security incident that may have involved some of your personal information. They also claim to have, quote, implemented additional security measures in efforts to prevent the recurrence of such a breach and to protect our systems. Allow me to translate that last statement. Now that our lion has escaped and enjoyed a buffet at the local playground, we're going to make the fence in our backyard a foot taller to make it less likely the lion will get loose again. But here is my favorite part. National Public Data is going to tell us what we can do to help prevent the misuse of our data that they allowed to be stolen in the first place. Keep in mind, these people made money with our data that they collected from us without our consent. They then failed to even take the basic precaution of storing that data in an encrypted format. And now they're going to tell us what we need to do to reduce the chances of that data being misused. National Public Data advises hundreds of millions of people to monitor their financial accounts looking for fraud, 
to contact the three major credit reporting agencies and to place a fraud alert on our credit files. And they point out we may need to do this every year because a fraud alert is only good for one year at a time. They also advise us to place a credit freeze on our report so creditors can't get a copy of our credit report. This means making additional phone calls if we ever want to take out a loan or open a new account of our own. Serious question for everyone. Considering the time that will be spent monitoring all of those reports for years to come and the amount of time that you would spend on hold making all of these phone calls to your financial institutions and to the credit reporting agencies, how many hours do you think it would take you to regularly monitor those reports and make those phone calls? For the sake of argument, let's just conservatively estimate about 10 hours. While there were 2.9 billion records stolen, it's not entirely clear how many people were involved. So again, let's just conservatively estimate 300 million people across the United States, Canada, and the UK. That would mean about 10 records per person. So we are talking about roughly 3 billion man hours of work required to reduce the damage from what national public data allowed to happen. Next question, what is your time worth? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average hourly wage in the United States is $29.81. By my rough calculations, national public data owes their victims around $90 billion just to compensate them for their time to minimize the damage from what national public data did to them. That doesn't include any actual losses people suffer from identity theft. But hey, no big deal. Lions get loose all the time. I mean, data breaches happen all the time. In my opinion, it is way past time for us to start changing the status quo on all these parasitic companies that are collecting our data without our consent and not even bothering to keep it safe. So what can be done? Due to public pressure, in the wake of the back-to-back -back Enron and WorldCom scandals, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. Section 906 of that act requires the CEO and CFO of publicly traded companies to personally certify financial reports, and the criminal penalty for certifying a report that does not conform to the requirements of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act is up to a $5 million fine and 20 years in prison. I want to see Congress pass a similar law with similar penalties that applies to the security requirements of every company, public or private, that traffics in personal information. Those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours. How do you think we can start holding these companies accountable? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. And as always, thank you for watching.